Hi everyone. Before we get to today's episode, I just wanted to check in and see how you're doing today. Um, I was thinking this morning as I was driving my daughter to her day program, um, just how wonderful it is to know that God loves me and um, that he has everything in his control and I don't have, um, I don't need to worry about anything because he's got it. Um, and I just hope that you know that as well, that you are loved um, by God. You don't need to earn it. You don't need to be quote unquote good or um, do certain things to attain his love. It's not conditional. Um, it is a free gift to all of us. Um, so I, I just wanted to share those thoughts I was having this morning. Um, I'm looking for some hero heart stories that could look like um uh, anything going on in your corner of the world. We've had kids write to us about their moms and dads being heroes. We've had uh, stories about um, uh, women who have uh, worked with homeless. Um, it could be anything going on in your world or about you yourself. Um, just something that would bring um, some light and hope to other listeners. If you have something like that, um, it, would you please send it to Mindset Matters Podcast One? That's the number one at gmail.com. I hope you have a great day and we'll get to today's episode. Descend into the depths of history on this gripping episode as we explore the untold story of the fearless Chernobyl divers. Beneath the icy waters and within the heart of the nuclear disaster, these unsung heroes braved unimaginable dangers to avert an even greater catastrophe. Join us as we plunge into the chilling waters of their harrowing journey, exploring the courage, sacrifice, and the eerie depths of the Chernobyl catastrophe that changed the world forever. Welcome to Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a remarkable journey into the lives of three such individuals. This is episode 19, The Courage to Do What It Takes, The Hero Hearts of the Chernobyl Three Divers. We're going to begin with some background information about the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, which is the setting of our episode today. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant is situated near the deserted city of Pripyat in northern Ukraine, and it is currently in the process of decommissioning. Positioned 16.5 kilometers or 10 miles northwest of Chernobyl, and 16 kilometers or 10 miles from the Belarus-Ukraine border, and approximately 100 kilometers or 62 miles north of Kiev. The plant utilized an artificial pond for cooling, sourced from the Pripyat River. Initially christened in honor of Vladimir Lenin, the facility underwent phased commissioning, with the four reactors commencing commercial operations from 1978 to 1984. In the tragic events of 1986, famously referred to as the Chernobyl disaster, reactor number four experienced a catastrophic meltdown and explosion. Consequently, the power plant is now situated within an extensive restricted region recognized as the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. The State Agency of Ukraine on Exclusion Zone Management oversees both the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone and the power plant. Despite the accident at reactor number four, the other three reactors continued to operate, maintaining a capacity factor between 60 and 70 percent. Units one and three each supplied 98 terawatt hours of electricity, while unit two, slightly behind, provided 75 TWHs. In 1991, unit two was permanently shut down due to complications arising from a turbine fire. Unit 3 was closed in the year 2000, 
the decision to close these units was largely influenced by international pressures. In 2013, the plant's operator announced that Units 1 through 3 had been fully defueled, marking the beginning of the decommissioning phase in 2015. This phase involved removing contaminated equipment from the power station's operational period and is anticipated to continue until 2065, as per the plant's operator. Despite the cessation of reactor operations, Chernobyl sustains a significant workforce due to the ongoing and demanding decommissioning or decontamination process that requires continuous management. Now we journey back to the year 1986 when an event occurred now referred to as the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. In the early hours of April 26, 1986, a safety test at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant near Pripyat, Ukraine, resulted in a catastrophic nuclear accident, marking it as the most severe incident of its kind in history. The aftermath claimed numerous lives initially, with the toll rising into the thousands over subsequent years. The release of radiation during the disaster surpassed that of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima by a staggering 400 times, causing widespread contamination across millions of acres of the surrounding area. The disaster unfolded when the number four reactor of the nuclear power plant exploded. This incident is one of only two nuclear energy accidents rated at the maximum severity level of seven on the International Nuclear Event Scale, the other being the 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident in Japan. The initial emergency response and subsequent mitigation efforts involved over 500,000 personnel and incurred an estimated cost of 18 billion rubles, roughly equivalent to 68 billion U.S. dollars. Regarded as the most severe nuclear disaster in history, it has left an indelible mark on global consciousness. After the reactor explosion, resulting in the deaths of two engineers and severe burns for two others, an emergency operation was initiated to extinguish fires and stabilize the remaining reactor. During this operation, 237 workers were hospitalized, with 134 showing symptoms of acute radiation syndrome. Within the next three months, 28 of the hospitalized individuals succumbed to the effects. The risk mitigation team realized that they had to address the issue of a core meltdown. Beneath the reactor, two levels of bubbler pools functioned as an extensive water reservoir for emergency cooling pumps and a pressure suppression system capable of condensing steam in the event of a small broken steam pipe. Above these pools, on the third floor below the reactor, a steam tunnel was situated. In the original design, steam released from a broken pipe was intended to enter the steam tunnel and be directed into the pools, bubbling through a layer of water. However, following the disaster, the pools and the basement became flooded due to ruptured cooling water pipes and the accumulation of firefighting water. The burning graphite, fuel, and other materials above, exceeding 12,000 degrees Celsius or 2,190 degrees Fahrenheit, began to penetrate the reactor floor and mixed with molten concrete, forming corium, a reactive semi-liquid similar to lava. Concerns arose that if this mixture breached the floor and reached the water pool, the ensuing steam could spread contamination or lead to a steam explosion, releasing more radioactive material. To prevent this, it was necessary to drain the pool. If this occurred, the resulting devastation would be astronomical. It is worth noting that the extent of the devastation could have been even more profound if it were not for the courageous actions of three volunteers. Enter the Courageous Chernobyl Three Divers. (music) 
On the 4th of May, 1986, a mere few days after the onset of the initial disaster, three individuals, mechanical engineer Alexei Ananenko, senior engineer Valerie Baspalov, and shift supervisor Boris Baranov, volunteered for a mission widely perceived as highly perilous. They were informed that in the event they did not survive, provisions would be made for their families. The success or failure of their mission held paramount significance, determining the fate of millions. Its importance stood unrivaled in magnitude, marking it as one of the most pivotal moments in history, akin to a significant turning point. The question that arises is, what precisely was the nature of their mission? It was explained that molten nuclear material was eroding the concrete reactor floor, gradually descending towards the pools beneath. The risk loomed large. If the molten substance interfaced with the water, it would trigger a steam explosion contaminated with radiation, leading to the catastrophic destruction of the entire plant, including its three other reactors. The aftermath would entail severe damage and a nuclear fallout of unprecedented proportions, posing a recovery challenge for the entire global community. To avert this crisis, the pools, containing approximately 20 million liters of water, needed to be emptied, and the sole method to achieve this was by manually manipulating the requisite valves in the now-submerged basement. This is where our three heroes entered the scene. Failure in their mission could have escalated the Chernobyl death toll into the millions. As asserted by nuclear physicist Vasily Nesterenko, the resulting explosion would have yielded a force ranging from 3 to 5 megatons, rendering a substantial portion of Europe uninhabitable for hundreds of thousands of years. Clad in wetsuits and armed only with flashlights, the three volunteers descended into the darkness of the basement in pursuit of the critical valves. The subsequent events have evolved into a contemporary myth. For years following the incident, a prevalent narrative circulated, recounting that the trio swam through radioactive water in near-complete darkness. The men worried they wouldn't be able to find the valves. Alexei Ananenko said in an interview, quote, When the searchlight beam fell on a pipe, we were joyous. The pipe led to the valves. We felt our way to the valve in the dark basement. Then we heard a rush of water out of the tank, and in a few more minutes we were being embraced by the guys, end quote. A collective sigh of relief echoed through the space. Exiting the basement as heroes, the men celebrated with their colleagues, reveling in the accomplishment of a successful mission. There is somewhat of a scarcity of more firsthand information about these incidents, um, as most of the valuable sources pertaining to Chernobyl remain untranslated. Um, and some speculate that this is because the Soviet government uh, has a desire to downplay the disaster and has kept certain crucial documents inaccessible to a wider audience. After this disaster, Alexei Ananenko continued to work at the power plant for a further three years until 1989. He continued to work in the industry. In 2018, he was hit by a car and spent 36 days in a coma and had to learn to walk again. And most recently, in March of 2022, he and his wife, Valentina, were forced to leave their home in Kiev to flee to western Ukraine amid the fear of Russian bombing. I was unable to find much information on Valery Bespolov's life. Um, he continued to live in Kiev and work in the industry um, and is still alive, um, but I could find very little about his life since then. Boris Baranov died in 2005 after suffering a heart attack. Um, all three men were awarded the honor of the Order for Courage in the Third Degree. Um, Mr. Baranov received his posthumously. More than three decades later, the actual extent of the devastation wrought by Chernobyl remains a topic of intense debate. 
However, there is unanimous agreement on the extraordinary courage exhibited by these three men on that pivotal day in May of 1986. Fully aware of the risks at hand, they were willing to sacrifice everything to safeguard the lives of an unfathomable number of people. In 2018, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko honored the three men with the Order for Courage. In a ceremony held in April of 2018 against the backdrop of the Chernobyl new safe confinement structure, Poroshenko highlighted that at the time of the disaster, the three men had been swiftly overlooked, with many details of the catastrophe still concealed by the Soviet news agency. Chernobyl, a television miniseries from 2019, is a historical drama focusing on the events surrounding the 1986 disaster and the subsequent cleanup operations. The creative mind behind the series is Craig Mazin, who both created and wrote it, while Johann Renk took on the role of director. In the following audio clip, in the series, Legasov and Sherbina, the leaders of the commission to eliminate the consequences of the disaster, are looking for people who would go underneath the reactor and drop the water that accumulated there. The scene is shown as a search for volunteers who, quote, will die a week later, end quote, from the radiation. Enjoy the clip from the miniseries. Open the sluice gate valve here. The valve will be difficult to operate, so we'll need three men. We'll need to know the basement layout. And of course, any volunteers will be rewarded. A yearly stipend of 400 rubles. And uh, for those of you working in reactors one and two, promotions. <clears throat> Why are reactors one and two still operating at all? My friend was a security guard that night, and uh, she's now dying. And we've all heard about the firemen. And now you want us to swim underneath a burning reactor. Do you even know how contaminated it is? <clears throat> I, I don't have an exact number. You don't need an exact number to know if it will kill us. But you can't even tell us that. <laughs> Why should we do this? For what? 400 rubles? You'll do it because it must be done. You'll do it because nobody else can. But if you don't, millions will die. If you tell me that's not enough, I won't believe you. This is what has always set our people apart. A thousand years of sacrifice in our veins. And every generation must know its own suffering. I spit on the people who did this. And I caused the price I have to pay. I'm making my peace with it. Now you make yours. Go into that water. Because it must be done. There's Pilov. Baranov. Alexei Anonenko reported that for the most part, the miniseries is accurate, um, you know, taking some creative licenses here and there. Um, an interesting side story is about Valery Legasov, a Soviet nuclear physicist, headed the commission tasked with investigating the Chernobyl catastrophe. Despite the Soviet Union government's attempt to minimize the disaster, Legasov advocated for transparency in communicating the commission's findings to the public. Widely regarded as a singular rational figure in the aftermath of the catastrophe, Legasov took charge of implementing immediate measures to address Chernobyl's long-term effects. Regrettably, Legasov took his own life two years later, just a day following the second anniversary of the explosion. 
In the aftermath, he left behind a collection of notes and tapes expressing his disillusionment with his government. Some speculate that his knowledge of the government's role in the disaster may have driven him to end his life in profound despair. Our quote from the day comes from this man, Valery Legasov, who sought the truth. His quote is, What is the cost of lies? It's not that we'll mistake them for the truth. The real danger is that if we hear enough lies, then we will no longer recognize the truth at all. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I hope we can take away that uh, in all disasters, it helps to look for the heroes. Um, please join us for our next episode, where we'll lighten the mood a little bit with a piece on Coco the Gorilla. I hope to see you then. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email Mindset Matters Podcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindset matters podcast, the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.